Hello guys, it's me Nish and I'm back again with another murder mystery and art episode. So Okay. So today I'm going to talk about a Scottish serial killer who is actually a necrophile. And if you guys don't know what a necrophile means, these are people who are like obsessed with dead bodies. Uh, they're like sexually attracted towards dead bodies and these kind of people usually like uh, cooking up dead bodies and eating them so Dennis Nielsen he was born on 23rd of November 1945 he was a Scottish guy and he had two siblings he was the second child he had uh, an elder brother whose name was Olaf, 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 like frozen. British names have fascinating pronunciations. I'm sorry if I get them wrong, guys. I'm honestly sorry. Um, and his younger sister was named Sylvia. So his parents, his mom, whose name was uh, Duthie White, and his dad's his mom was Scottish and his dad was a Norwegian soldier so he was in some uh, some program that allowed him to uh, travel to other places and vol do volunteer work but yeah he was a soldier so his dad's name was uh, Olav Magnus Moksim his dad's name was Olav Magnus Moksim it sounds like like he was born straight out of the series dark and his dad had adopted the last name Nielsen, hence Dennis got his last name, Dennis Nielsen, instead of it being Magnus Mokshim, it sounds very weird. Anyway, so this was, uh, his parents were like a young couple. Dennis Nielsen's childhood, uh, childhood memories were him going out with his grandparents, even though his grandparents were not appro approving of the marriage of her, his father but uh yeah dennis's childhood was pretty good apart from the fact that there were a lot of problems going on in his marriage so his dad was never constantly around because of which they had to live with his uh maternal grandparents so his dad used to come and go and it was never a constant relationship with him and his dad and after a few years of the marriage uh, the parents got divorced and so they were living with his grandparents and and uh, dennis's grandfather was like the male role model to him in his childhood his grandparents like gave him a lot of love especially his grandfather he was a fisherman so he used to take dennis on his shoulders and ride around take long walks along the shore and dennis remembered all of that so that was like the most uh, magnificent time from dennis's childhood and until his uh, grandfather died so his grandfather was at shore when he had a heart attack and he passed away dennis was quite small i think he was like 10 years old and uh so when the body came back his mom was obviously devastated and they didn't know what to tell dennis so they were asking him if he wanted to see the body and then he said that he wanted to see his grandfather's body he used to call his grandfather his hero and when he saw the dead body that was the breaking point for him i guess so after that uh, he used to stay away from any elderly love so he used to try and avoid elder people showing affection towards him presenting his siblings like he started becoming jealous of his siblings because his grandparents his grandmother and his mom used to show like uh, more care towards them and stuff like that so he started resenting them and things were not pretty for him in his childhood i guess in 1954 to 1955 so he went to the shore and he drowned himself and he was almost he had to skewed and pulled out from the sea and he claimed that if that didn't happen he was very close to meeting his grandfather and his grandfather was uh, coming to rescue him so he wasn't happy about the fact that he was rescued because after a while uh, when Dennis hit puberty he realized he, that he was homosexual and that kind of confused him and shamed him 
he felt ashamed of himself for being homosexual because come on it's the 1980s and of course this kind of thing was not accepted by the society or treated well by the society back then so he thought that this is a very shameful thing and he he kept it a secret from his family and uh the few friends that he had only close to his younger sister sylvia they used to like play games sometimes and you know talk to each other uh, so he used to care about his younger sister a lot so when he found out that he was homosexual uh he actually did not pursue relationships with the men he he was attracted to because they had similar facial features like uh Sylvia, his younger sister, so he thought that these feelings probably manifested uh, because of his care towards Sylvia. And guess what? To test his theory, he went ahead and he sexually fondled his younger sister because he thought that his masculinity would come out that way and he was confusing his sexuality or his uh, uh, desires with the care that he had for Sylvia. But even after that, he realized that no, he was actually homosexual and this became more prominent when he went ahead and he sexually fondled his elder brother Olaf in his sleep. So that's when Olaf started suspecting that this guy might be homosexual. And his brother then suspected that he might be homosexual. And because of that, he went ahead and he started demeaning him in front of the society, in front of his family, and calling him stuff like hen, which in that time uh, meant girl-like. So that messed it up for him even more. It put even more distress on him and he started being even more jealous of his brother because he was more famous, he was more preferred and he wasn't like ashamed to the family. At the age of, at the young age of um, 14, Dennis Nielsen, he joined the British Army as a cadet because he was feeling so ashamed of his, himself, of his sexuality and stuff like that, that he thought that joining the army would be the most honorable thing to do. So he joined the army and he completed his training in uh, 1975 and he was immediately sent to work as a civil servant. and. Um, for a brief while and he worked as a civil servant for a brief while so he wanted to be identified as a british male so he shifted to melrose avenue he was going to a pub i think it's called a crickle cricklewood arms pub and he met this guy whose name was gallican so if you guys are familiar with the concept of pubs you will know that uh, pubs have bouncers outside so Gallican was uh, fighting with them and then like you know uh, Dennis was like okay let me jump in let me be the hero let me save him because mm, I like that I kind of like that guy so Dennis jumped in to try you know an attempt to take his side and uh, Dennis was like hey do you want to come over and uh, during that time uh, Dennis was not really living in a room it was like a room in a hotel so he was living there and he invited him and they instantly bonded and i guess they went into a relationship and then he they promised each other that they would buy a bigger house with each other and have so what dennis did immediately is he took uh the money that he had in his will left by his dad and he cashed all of that out to buy this great big house together with this guy and uh, they were living together and stuff like this. And after they moved in, like maybe uh, two years or so, they don't specifically say how much long this relationship lasted, but two years or so and uh, things started to you know break off between them like uh, it wasn't working out well and uh, for both of them and soon they started sleeping in different beds and instead of the the house was not completely furnished so they uh, did not really buy beds and furniture and stuff like that so house the house wasn't well furnished so soon they started sleeping in different beds and bringing home different sexual partners and 
basically they were parting ways and he is he has been given the he has been assigned the name as the Mushville Hill killer because most of it happened most of his killings happened in the Mushville uh, region he had this method his this technique of killing so his first victim was uh, 14 years old and his name was uh, Stephen Holmes and he was 14 years old so he was at this pub so he always goes around to homosexual pubs and finds guys and that's that was the that that's how he used to pick up men this Holmes guy who was 14 he was trying to buy alcohol but of course he was failing miserably because he is not of age so uh, when Dennis met him in the pub he noticed that he was trying to buy alcohol so dennis told him that why don't you come over and you know i will give you some alcohol and uh, some drinks and some music so he's 14 so he's like oh my god i'm so my dreams coming true i'm 14 i'm gonna try alcohol let's do this so nielsen went or uh, sorry nielsen took Holmes to his place and of course they they had drinks and they listened to music and they fell asleep so in the morning when uh they woke up nielsen saw that this guy uh holmes was sleeping in his bed and he confessed uh, he stated in one of his confessions that he the thought of him leaving uh, made him angry so he was going to make this guy stay till uh, New Year's whether the guy liked it or not. So what he did next was what creeped me out the most He took a necktie. He started strangling Holmes, so he strangled him until he lost consciousness and then He bathed him in water. It's like a ritual He fulfilled his sexual desire with a corpse and he buried he cut up his bones into pieces and buried the body under his floorboards in his house two months before he decided that he was going to dig it out and have this huge ass bonfire behind his house and burn the bodies in disguise so that's what he did after two months his next victim was a chinese guy on the 11th of october 1979 nielsen attempted to murder another guy who was a student from hong kong and whose name was andrew hu so somehow this andrew hu guy escaped and he escaped and he went to the police but I don't know what came into his head exactly he decided to not press charges against this Nielsen guy I mean this guy was strangling you and you just decide you want to be an angel and not press charges against him uh, two months after the attempted murder of who on 3rd December he killed another guy who was 26 year years old and it was not a surprise that he started killing more often now so he became a serial killer and before he shifted from uh, Melrose Avenue to this uh, Mushwell region he had already killed around uh, 12 people he had already killed around 12 guys whose bodies he had buried under the floorboards so while all of this was going on, Nielsen actually did have an on and off relationship with a guy called uh, Martin Hunter Craig. And uh, he met this guy in 1979, four years before Carl Stotter, who I will talk about in a minute. And they have been having this on and off relationship. Shifted there, this was more like a storeroom house kind of an apartment, so it was too small or uh, for him to adjust the bodies under his floorboards so he started chopping them up up and cooking the meat and flushing it down the toilet and he kept the bones in a bag in his uh, cupboard so what happened is another guy was happened to be one of his survivors 
his name was Carl's daughter. So after shifting to 23 Cranley Hills, this Carl's daughter guy was in a pub. He's like very depressed and upset because of his abusive ex-relationship and somehow this Dennis Nielsen guy being like a whole ass guy magnet, he ended up um, having a good chat with Carl's daughter and inviting him over. And Carl being the, I'm so depressed ass guy, I'm gonna go over to his place. No, no, what were you thinking Carl? Why, why would you go over to someone's place who you just met in a bar no matter how heartbroken you are? Anyways, so they were drinking and listening to music through headphones when obviously Carl fell asleep. So when he woke up, he saw that Nielsen, that Dennis was actually trying to help him out of it. But Dennis was actually the one who was uh, strangling him with the sleeping bag. And he fell unconscious so Dennis thought that he had died but so Dennis took the body and placed it on a sofa on a chair only when Dennis's dog went and started licking Carl's doctor's hands and face that he regained consciousness and Dennis immediately knew that he is still alive so he started resuscitating him I don't know why but he started resuscitating Carl all right so he was there for two days he was like constantly being conscious and unconscious and conscious and unconscious so dennis attempted to kill him again this time by trying to drown him in water because you know he has this ritual of bathing all of his bodies so he was trying to bathe him in water and he was unconscious so dennis thought that he died so when he suddenly became conscious and found himself in cold water dennis uh tried to make a story up so he was like uh you were choking you were struggling you were caught in the zipper of the sleeping bag and you fell unconscious you went into a shock so i emerged you in cold water what a lie this guy this card starter guy is really sad he will woke up and he went to the hospital and he was like i think someone was trying to attempt to kill me and the doctors were like if someone was trying to attempt to kill you would would you know they let you go or would they leave you and so Carl was like yeah I guess that, that makes sense why would they let me go out of out of their house if they were trying to kill me and the doctors were like I think you need to get like a psych check you're crazy bro you're crazy no one was trying to kill you you're just crazy and he did not press charges again then because he thought that 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 actually did not happen so because he was so shook from the incident he started losing memory of this incident so Dennis again got away so this plumber comes in and he's having complaints from Nielsen and all the other residents in the building that things are not being flushed out properly so he comes up and he goes behind the building and he opens up this drain where he then finds pieces of flesh and tiny bones so he got suspicious like Bailey says suspicious so he got suspicious and he called his supervisor who then called the police so uh, during this time Nelson was actually not in his apartment he was outside so the police came came over and then uh, they looked at the drain the entire day was clogged with tiny pieces of bone, bone fragment so they thought that they were like you know skin bones or something like that so when they took took it back to the forensic lab the, the person in the forensic lab was like uh, this is actually uh, a piece from a skull and he's like you're kidding me he's like I know I can actually put all the pieces together and tell you exactly who this person is these are pieces from skull so you have a serial killer you have your serial killer in uh, this person is a serial killer so the, when the police went back to the apartment they knew that this clocking could not have been from any of the floors below so it ha must have been the topmost floor and the topmost floor was obviously Nielsen's Ooh, here we go so Nielsen who was outside then comes over and then uh, the police goes like uh, so we have been the Jane was clogged with you know bones of dead bodies and he's like oh it's such a shame like pretending to not know anything pretending to be sad about it it's like look man I'm telling you right now, don't you dare lie to me, Where's the, where are the rest of the bodies?
and funnily enough Dennis was like all right fair enough and he showed them where the other parts of the bodies were so Dennis was obviously immediately arrested and he was charged with uh, 10 murders attempt to murder uh, 10 murders and I think two or three failed attempts to murder the one with who and the one with Carl's daughter and the media and uh, the people of the law were actually in support of Dennis at that time because it's the 1980s homosexuality was not really accepted so the people were like all those boys got whatever they deserved it suited them right Dennis should have killed more guys because all of these people were gay and stuff like that so this kind of made him famous and he was enjoying the fame and served life imprisonment and on 18th May 2018 uh, he died in prison so that was it with today's story and I will be back next week with another video another story and another painting and if you like this one give it a like share it and like my page give it a comment bye